Hello there, welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be looking at Vampire Hunter D, made in 1985. Um, one of my favourite animes, actually, well, from like for your regards to sort of 80s, sort of old school um, anime action. Um, just absolutely love this film, so I'll be getting into that, to that today, if I can talk properly. Uh, I'll be getting into this today. Um, I, I think a lot of people with Vampire Hunter D, when that, a lot of people think it's based on a manga, but it's actually based on novels. So there's been, I know there's been people that have bought like Vampire Hunter D, or online or something with no idea that I mean how people don't know it's a novel it's not actually quote unquote sort of an act like a manga I have no idea but yeah I remember this being one of the first anime that I bought on DVD back in the day when manga uh, entertainment UK were releasing like their back catalogue into the format here um, going back to I've never had it on VHS it was around like sort of when DVDs first come out um, I remember that's, I mean, I've had this film for quite a long time. I will review um, Bloodlust at some point, but we'll just be getting into the original Vampire Hunter D today. Um, so the, basically, the film is set in the la like in the far distant future where mutants, demons, and monsters all exist, like coexist together. Vampire Hunter D is sort of a lone hero, half blood, half human vampire. He's known as Vampire Hunter, very much a Van Helsing type of character, as you would expect, sort of from you know, like the Hammer Horror um, sort of huge like hell not talking about the uh, Hugh Jackman Van Helsing film, but he's that kind of character. He's a Van Helsing S type of um, character here. Um, this young lady, Doris, um, she's bitten by Count Magnus Lee, and he's like about 10,000 years old. He's lived for a long, long time, and um, she must rid the curse. Um, she recruits D to help. Um, the daughter of Lee doesn't want her to be brought into the family as it goes against family tradition. Um, D has like this sort of face like homunculus um coming from his left hands i've never read i will get it out there's now i've never actually read the novels or any of the vampire hunter d source material i'm just going on this um anime that um we're talking about today um so this i'll say this face in his hand he's very different to d he's sort of a contrast to his character it fleshes out the character a bit more with d rather than d being so one-dimensional the character the you know the the character traits of the face in his hand that talks to him and it only really talks to D, it doesn't talk to anybody else. Um, it adds a great deal of contrast to the character and only converses with D, like I say, which adds something rather than him being just sort of one dimensional and he even goes so far as to save his life at one point as well. So other characters, other characters in this film are called Greco, um, he's sort of the mayor's sleazy son. Um, and he always wants Doris. He's just one. You know, nothing good is going to end up happening to him because you know he's just a sleaze. You know he's going to get his comeuppance at some point during the story. Um, Magnus Lee's daughter Lamenka, who has mentioned she doesn't want Doris to become part of the family, and Regency, who is basically only doing it so he was like sort of one of the Count Magnus Lee sort of hitmen sort of helpers who sort of comes with uh, Lamenka initially at first to go and. Um, have a like deal with D or just um, uh, inspect him, but um, yeah, he's basically he wants to just get, he wants the prestige of becoming a noble uh, within Count Magnus Lee's family, and um, so he's just doing it so basically if he can get something back. Um, what is very interesting about these characters on Magnus Lee's side um, is they all sort of have redemption near the end. Uh, Regency and the Manka, they do sort of. It's not just they're just after. You know, they're evil and then that's it. You know, they they do actually, there is, even though, yeah, like it's not that long, it's only about 80 minutes, but um, they do give them characters on, like the evil characters, Lamenka and Regency, a bit of um, a redemption. There is a, like, they do have a bit of an arc, a bit of a story there. Um, um, you got, like, Regency, like I say, he's realising that he's just being used and he ends up saving Doris's younger brother, Dan. Um Lamenka goes down with the castle at the end of the movie after it's been destroyed because she wants to die as a noble. Um, it turns out that D, we find it later on, is the offspring of Count Dracula. Um, so, as mentioned, the whole film has really good hammer horror and it's got like Castlevania type vibes. If any of you are familiar with the Castlevania series of games, um, which is not a bad, obviously, not a bad thing in the slightest. You know, Castlevania, hammer horror, love it, absolutely love it. Um, guns are in this film. There are guns um, that you know in this universe, but um, 
but where, and like I say, it's set in the future, but they are seldomly used. For example, D uses like a cyborg horse, much like um, if, if any of you out there remember the old cartoon Brave Star, um, if ever you ever remember that show. So there, there is that futuristic element there. They say they do have guns. There is like, um, like I say, he's, his horse is a cyborg, but they don't sort of expect, there's not like it's full of droids and uh, robots and things like that. There just are a few elements of things like that. Um, I did read as well, I know the director said the idea for this film was to make an anime that you could watch after like a hard day of working or like a hard day of studying, um, like sort of without getting more tired, without the film being a drag to watch, it's, it's the ideal film to watch if like you don't have to concentrate too hard, uh, it's very much a visual piece of work and it really has like a sad dark gothic atmospheric world that is created here and I, I absolutely love um old school anime like this i really do absolutely love it um there is a scene not long into the movie when basically it's just d attacking the castle and there is very little dialogue in this scene um if you know the scene i mean which where he approaches count magnus lee's castle and he sort of propels himself over the bridge because basically he's just gone to deal with him you know he's just basically gone to just basically kill him sort it out and this is about 10 15 20 minutes into the movie um there's very little dialogue in this moment of the film as i say and he just approaches lee's castle which is very atmospheric in itself in the way it sets it up and it's just him getting through the castle basically encountering different monsters and demons on his way as he's like um just trying to get through to reach count magnus lee um it's very i don't know if any of you have seen like sort of um batman ninja um, but when sort of when Batman arrives in like feudal Japan, he's, he's only been there about 10, 20 minutes and straight away he's just storming Joker's castle. I love that. I love that idea. It's like because where they've got a bit of a story to tell, um, you'd think like most directors would just save something like that to the end, like the raid on the castle here. It's like, well, in like if this was actually like sort of really happening, why would you wait around? It's like, right, I've got to deal with him. I'll go and do it now. Do you know what I mean? I, I, love, I love that sort of plot device. Um, if you notice at one point they even put in... Um, there's even an Empire Strikes Back line in this because I've watched this English dub um, where she says, um, I love you, I know line. That That's in there. Like they, they st like steal that straight from Empire Strikes Back. Um, and of course, we have to have a scene where our female lead is in the shower. We have to have a scene, of course, it's, you know, it's 80s anime. Um, you have to have a scene female leads in the shower. I mean, you only need to look at, say, although it wasn't made in the 80s, but just like the Street Fighter 2 animated movie. Um, you know, where Chan Lee's in the shower. You always have to put your female lead, if it's in an anime, in the shower. It's almost like it just that always seems to happen for some reason. Um, there's a lot of, there's nice, it's quite violent in places, but not too violent. As I say, it's only a 15. There's nothing to like sort of too graphic in this film, I'd say. I mean, there's little bits here and there. Um, like at one point, Count Magnus Lee gets like a knife in the eye and he sort of pulls it out. And he sort of takes the eye with it like you can see it actually sort of coming out of the socket like it just pulls it out right near the end and it makes like a sort of gooey gruesome noise um so yeah there are little bits here and there but it's like i say it's nothing too gruesome it's nothing too violent where you sort of cringe at it it's not like ninja scroll level violence or anything like that but i to me it's just like i said very fun castlevania-esque hammer horror-esque um just a uh, like fantasy adventure like horror film it, it really good i think that what it has a lovely good soundtrack to it the soundtrack's really good um there is a plot point that doesn't make too much sense to me like ray ginsey gets given i don't know if again this is just uh, i've watched it a couple like well a couple of, i've watched it quite a number of times over the years um and every time i watch it again i don't know if it's something i'm missing i'm really not sure um Ray gets given this special candle, right, that burns special incense from Count Lee in order to, like, deal with D and take him out and, um, you know, just um, kill him, basically. And it's meant to weaken anyone with vampire blood. And this turns out to be a fake, right? So Count Magnus Lee has given him this thing, this special incense candle that turns out to be a fake. However, Greco finds it and he uses it on Lamenka and then it works. Like, it works then. And then later, Ray Ginsey confronts and kills Greco using a real candle. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what happened. I mean, I might have missed just one bit of dialogue that might have explained it, but I've, like I say, I've watched it numbers of times and I just can't work it because Regency has it, it doesn't work, and then Greco finds it and then it works. 
And then for out of nowhere, Regency has got another one that does work. Um, just this may be me, but again, some of you out there might be able to explain it. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. I don't know. Um, but overall, I mean, I love this anime. I really do. I really do. I think it's a fantastic, like I say, especially old school horror anime. I love the setting of it. I love the vibe that it has, and I love the atmosphere and the soundtrack to this and the mood that it evokes. It's really something special and amazing. Um, I, again, like I say, just a classic from back in the day. I mean, this was one of them films sort of you watch, like I watched after you've done the obvious Akira's, the Ghost in the Shells. You know, you start moving on to other territory, and you, obviously, manga entertainment in the UK were just that's where you went to for anime you know they were the ones that releasing all they could i mean there's loads um that they did release on vhs and they never for some reason got around to releasing them on dvd i don't know due to copyright or something like that but um if you like your horror you like your gothic action and you like your old school anime please do make sure to check this one out thanks for watching i'll see you soon